están con la UPF, busco a mi hermana. ¡A sus posiciones! ¡Fuego! Fue un error venir aquí. Si quieres respuestas, sé paciente. ¡Ana! No Man's Land is set against the backdrop of the Syrian civil war in around about 2014, 15, somewhere like that. It involves um, three or four different storylines of different people who get drawn into, on both sides, the Syrian civil war. So the story itself, the production itself, is not really about geopolitics. It's not really about coming down on any particular side. It is just telling the story of that conflict through the eyes of people who have got drawn into it by accident and on purpose. Uh, I was asked to do it by Odette, um, the, the director and the producer, Maria, and um, they asked me to do it and I was delighted to do it. He's a, the character I play is called Stanley. I can't give you too much information about him because it involves multiple spoilers. What I can say is that he is a mysterious and enigmatic man who The other stories seem not to be connected at first sight, but I think what we find out is that the person that makes them all connected to each other is this character, Stanley. And uh, Stanley is somebody who works for very powerful um, backers. So for you, he might work for a government, he might work for an intelligence agency, he might work for a private security company. He might work for something in that world. But I can't tell you who and I can't tell you what. But uh, he's a highly intelligent, very manipulative man who is more than capable of pretending to be one kind of person. If he wants, if he wants information out of you, he will judge which kind of person he should be in order to guarantee that he gets that information out of you. But he's he's yeah. somebody who you think he's one thing and he's probably something else. And even then he might be something else after that. He's, it's, he's very difficult to pin down. You know, so that's the kind of man he is. And, uh, and we won't, don't really find out really who he is, I think until maybe episode five or six, something like that, I can't remember. But it takes some time, and even then you're not really sure if he's telling the truth. Um, uh, I think there's only one person who knows who's telling the truth, and that's Stanley. I really love the script. I think they were very, very well, they're very well um, researched, and uh, they tell sides of the story about the Syrian civil war that I I wasn't really that aware of. For example, I knew vaguely about the female fighters, the YPJ, but I didn't really, I, I hadn't really looked into it myself. Um, I think they are an underreported and in many cases, in cases an unreported side of the story in, in Syria but they are an extraordinary group of women who come at that war and come into their communities very much from a very strong feminist perspective. And they, um, one of the things I think the writers found out, which it's fascinating is that, is that if you are, if you are an, if you are Islamic fundamentalist, if you work, if you, if you follow ISIS, one of the things that happens if you are killed by a woman in battle you don't get the 72 virgins and you don't get to heaven yeah fascinating really interesting yeah. so really makes sense to have a fiercely ferociously strong group of women with AK-47s and old bad, you know, really not great, not great weapons. You know, they made their own armored vehicles out of trucks. 
they were um they just were an extraordinary bunch of women who uh who who completely changed that side of the war and um and uh, and that's one of the stories we tell we also tell one of the stories is that we tell is of three young men from west london how how you can become radicalized in your local community through the internet and not only through the internet but through bad actors within your local community you become radicalized and one minute you're knocking around west london and the next minute you're beheading people in the desert in in syria i find that a fascinating interesting process and i wanted to find out more about it so i you know the i think sometimes you read a script and it opens up a world to you that you didn't really know much about or you thought you knew something about but actually you didn't really know much about um, and so I was really interested in helping to tell that story. For sure, absolutely, of course it is. You know, they, it means it shows that they are more than capable of, of doing the kind of, uh, more than capable of fighting in battles in exactly the same way as men, that they can be as organized, as ferocious, as strong, and uh, I think, uh, you know, they did their sex a great service by doing what they did. Um, I, I do think they're, they, yeah, they are, they're not, they're not somebody, you, not somebody you'd want to cross. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of the YPJ. I think any story, I think, you know, just because the Syrian civil war seems to have gone away from since the collapse of the caliphate, th this story seems to have disappeared from our newspapers. Um, but just because it has doesn't mean to say that there aren't interesting stories to be told there. You know, there are still interesting stories to be told about what happened in the Vietnam War or what happened in the Second World War or the First World War. You know, we had Dunkirk last two or three years ago, you know. That's a war that happened 50, 60, 70 years ago now. So it, it kind of, it all depends on the writing and how interesting the characters are. And boy, are they interesting, the characters in this show. You'll find them gripping from beginning to end. And the way that the story is told, the way that the producers and the director and the writers have done a, um, they do a time trick with the, with the storytelling that kind of folds in on itself and repeats and comes through and you see it from a different angle it's an eminently watchable show and uh, I would urge people to watch it because I think not only is it fascinating about the Syrian civil war but it's fascinating about the characters that are involved well we uh, well my character doesn't speak Kurdish so my character, well, he might speak Kurdish, but we just never saw him speak Kurdish. So we never, I never needed to use the Kurdish or the Syrian people for, for any of the scenes that I did. But certainly the three young actors who were playing the, the British men who went out to fight for ISIS, extraordinary. I mean, if you, if you are Kurdish, I would defy you to know whether or not these people are actually um, Kurdish or not. They, uh, they certainly, you know, they, they had their accents, as far as I'm aware, are immaculate. The way they speak Kurdish in, in the show is, is, is exactly right. So, you know, everybody did their homework. And I think everybody, all the actors, the production, the crew, the director, everybody brought their A game to this show. Um, and they knew it was important and they knew it was important to get it right because it's a very sensitive subject. And you don't want you don't want to be cavalier with sensitive subjects. You have to you have to be very careful and look after people's stories. As far as I'm aware, they were certainly talking about, you know, there are more stories to be told here with these people. So and I think we very much leave it at the end of the final episode open to tell more stories and if there's a market for it and if people really like it and you know if it wins awards if if it gets a good audience then i'm sure it will be back um uh my character is alive and well at the end of the at uh, the end of the show so he may come back he he may come back for a few episodes he may come back for all of the episodes in another season 
but we have to wait and see what the figures are, I guess, before they decide whether to do any more. I would very much invite people to come and watch No Man's Land. This is a journey through the Syrian civil war that you will not regret watching and joining us on. Um, and I think as far as the message of the show is, be careful what you wish for, because it might just come true. <laughs>